So today we're making homemade mozzarella cheese from scratch. So if that sounds like fun, come join me and Jules in the kitchen and check it out. This recipe is so easy and it turns out every time, so you guys are gonna really enjoy it. Uh, it only has four ingredients. We have our good quality milk, we have our rennet, citric acid, and salt. And that's, that's it. Budget. And you know, we had this week extra milk laying around, which is why we're making the mozzarella cheese out of it. You know, anytime we have extra milk, we'll either throw together yogurt, cheese, sometimes the chickens get a treat. It just depends. Love it. But today it's mozzarella cheese and homemade pizza on the menu for tonight. So yeah, let's head into the kitchen and get this going. It should only take about 30, 40 minutes of your time, time, right? No, and then you're then you're done. And you've got fresh cheese and it is delicious. You gotta have a cup of coffee. No matter what you're doing, if you're making mozzarella cheese, you gotta have a cup of coffee. It's just a rule. Cream's on top. For this recipe today, we had two gallons of milk available. So we are basing everything off of that two gallons, okay? So for our recipe, it's gonna be two gallons of milk, two tablespoons of salt, but listen, you don't even have to put any salt in it if you don't want, if you're watching your salt. So we like salty cheese, so we're putting two tablespoons of salt-ish in there. Um, two teaspoons of citric acid, dissolved in a small amount of water because you want that to be dissolved. So it might, I mean, I don't know what, two to three, two to three tablespoons. tablespoons of water, just a little bit of water. So we're gonna dissolve that. And then, because we're using two gallons of milk, we're gonna use three milliliters of the rennet that we have. Now every rennet bottle is different. You need to read the instructions on yours. Ours, we don't have to put in uh, water, we don't have to do anything, we put it right in, we add it right in with our milk. So make sure you read the instructions on whatever brand that you have. We uh, got this brand off of Amazon, and uh, yeah, we've been happy with it so far. So we have our milk in the pot, and before we heat that up, we have to add in our citric acid. And if I can open it, <laughs> there we go, okay. So I have two to three tablespoons of water in this little jar. Then I'm putting in two tablespoons, or not tablespoons, two teaspoons, teaspoons, small teaspoons of citric acid. And then you're gonna stir that for a little bit until it gets nice and dissolved in there. Now we are going to add our citric acid that has been dissolved into water into the milk. Just make sure you get all of that out of there. Stir this in really well. I'm gonna turn my heat on to like a medium low. And then I'm gonna take my candy thermometer, place it in the pot, and we're going to let this slowly heat up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And mixing it pretty much the whole time. You don't want it to scald on the bottom of the pot at all. the heat, take out the thermometer, we're going to get our rennet. Okay, and we are going to add the three milliliters of rennet. And as soon as she adds in the rennet, we're going to stir it from the bottom up. We want that rennet to get all throughout our milk. Stir it from the bottom up for 30 seconds, and then we're going to cover it back up. Okay, like I said, stirring this up real good, getting it all incorporated. And then we're gonna put the lid back on. I think we're about there here. Let's see. So remember, we got the milk and the citric acid up to that 100 degrees, and then uh, took, took it off the heat and added the rennet, stirring it up for 30 seconds or so. We've been doing that. Now we're gonna lid it, set our timer for 10 minutes and then come back in about 10 minutes and take a look. While our milk is sitting for these 10 minutes, 
we have another pot ready here and this just has water in it nothing exciting just water in a lid and what we're doing with this pot of water we're going to use this in a little bit when we have our mozzarella cheese ball <laughs> we're going to be using this hot water to kind of melt it um, squeeze out the way wash it anyway we'll get to that but while this is sitting here for 10 minutes we're going to go ahead and start up this pot and bringing it up to temperature we need this water to be up to about 175 degrees it has to be nice and warm uh, to be able to have the, the mozzarella cheese do what we want it to do. So we'll talk about this later, but we're gonna go ahead and get this started. Our timer just went off. It's been sitting for 10 minutes. Here, here. See, it looks normal, but really it's a giant curd on top. You can see all the yellow liquid is the way, the white liquid or the white mass is the curd. And actually the rennet is what makes it separate. So I'm gonna cut this into little cubes. Look at that, it's so fun. Ah, stirring it. <laughs> Why are you cutting it, Julia? So it'll be easier to mix after it stops moving. Stop. So you're pretty much just breaking apart the yeah. big chunks so that we can continue to do what we need to do for the recipe. Yes. There we go. There we go. And not exactly, you don't have to be exact, but you want to try to get like one and a half, one inch chunks. So I'm going to break that up a little bit. And then we're going to get our candy thermometer again and heat this up to a back up to 105 degrees while stirring it. And again, medium low heat. And you're stirring it the whole time. This yes. shouldn't take long. No, it's already at 100 degrees. Just gotta go at five degrees. Right, okay. We have this big bowl here for catching the whey and I have a cheesecloth and then a colander in here just to catch all of the curds that we've separated from the whey. All right, and we're gonna take our pot, which is at 105 degrees. degrees. We're gonna pour it in here carefully without <laughs> making a mess. Hopefully. You come by it honestly, Julian. And the whey can be used for lots of different things. Most of the time, to be honest, I feed it, we usually feed it to the chickens. Either the meat birds, because it's excellent protein for them. Meat birds love it. The meat birds love it, all the animals love it, but the dogs love it too. But the chickens can, the egg layers can use it. All right, this is gonna, it's the messy be part. Yep. Oh, there you go. Here comes all the curds. There we go. Okay. There we go. So yes, we're not going to waste the whey. You can cook with it and stuff as well, but we're not going to do that. work with this and try to squeeze out most of the um, whey that's still in here. And now this has mostly come together, I'm going to get rid of this cheesecloth. Okay, now is when we need the water, the pot of water that we heated up to 175 degrees. It's warm. And we're gonna use this to wash our cheese and get the rest of the whey out. We'll just keep the quality of the cheese tasting good. Okay, I'm gonna divide this off into three little balls now, just so it'll be easier to work with. This is a lot of cheese. <laughs> well, we've got a big family got to make some pizza. And this is all working to incorporate it. The hot water is actually creating like a melting uh, so that you can make the uh, cheese all incorporate into one and eventually we'll get to stretching it and all that good stuff. You want to do that one and I'll work on one yes. of these. Okay, I've added this cheese into this really hot water. So be careful, it's hot. And I'm just going to let it 
melt a little bit and let it wash some of the whey out. I'm just using a spoon because it's too hot for my hands right now. Can I put this one in yet or not? Yeah, go ahead. All right, and then I'll start squeezing the third yeah. ball of mozzarella. It's such a pretty color too. You can tell we use fresh milk for this because it's got that beautiful raw milk um, color. Yeah, from the grass-fed cows. One here, so it's already looking softer. All right, if you want me to trade you, I can. Here, they need to be in here a little longer. And that one can come in here. Okay. If you want to give me one, I can start massaging one in here. Just keep that. I am. I'm getting all this okay, uh, way really out of here. Okay. It's Ooh, it's melty. Right. It's definitely fine. melty. Definitely becoming more incorporated into a, a single ball instead of seeing all the individual curves coming together. Yeah. This one can be worked with too. Ooh, it's hot. Just put it in here. Hot cheese. <laughs> so now that we've washed out all of the whey, or most of it anyhow, we're gonna start working with it and start trying to stretch it out. It's still pretty thick. Yeah, it's still so trying just to keep warming it up in the water or then once you stretch it out to as far as it'll go without breaking, you just kind of make it into a ball again, squeeze it together and throw it back in the hot water. Right. This one's not getting much weight out of it anymore either, yeah. so this can go back in the water. Do you want me to work any other ones? Um, here, I'm gonna work with this one while I do. Sure, oh. put it in here. Okay. All the sound effects. It's <laughs> squishy. squishy. It's squishy. It's squishy cheese. So we're beginning the stretching process. Marie is a professional stretcher, so I'm gonna trade positions. <laughs> about how long is the stretching process usually start to finish. I know every batch is different. 10 minutes. We just do minutes. it till it looks nice and stretchy. Yeah. And we'll straight. see how long it is. We just started. We'll keep track about how long it took us from start to finish. It's already getting stretchy. But that's why you want this water warm in this red pot here because that's what creates this uh, melting effects to be able to stretch and get the cheese all formed. Okay, we're going to throw some salt onto the cheese. So you're putting all the three different balls mm -hmm. in the colander here. Then for all three of these, I'm going to sprinkle over them um, two tablespoons of our Himalayan salt. Like you're going to try to do an even? Yeah, just kind of evenly. And now they're going to work it in. Yep. Same process. And then yep. you continue to keep dunking it into the water and massaging it and stretching till you know, it looks incorporated. All right, work the cheese till the salt is incorporated, and then that is the last step besides putting it in the fridge for later. Okay, we are on the final step. We're just shaping this cheese into the fresh mozzarella balls. They look so good. Now everything's incorporated, the salt's incorporated, the curds are all incorporated. So what do you do once it's formed? We're just gonna seal it up with some plastic wrap. And then throw it in the fridge. Don't worry, you can use it. homemade pizza. This we already made earlier in the day and by we I mean Julianne and uh, I had her whip up some of our favorite homemade pizza dough and it's been rising in the fridge. Um, I will we're not going to show you this on video today but I will leave down in the description I'll leave the recipe so you guys can make this at home but right now we're going to make a mess in the kitchen okay so uh, usually today Josh is not here so I don't need to make as much pizza but usually Honestly, we triple this, but today we just did a single batch. Let's get some flour in here. This is always a nice messy meal, but it's worth it because it's so good. I set the oven to 500 degrees, and uh, yeah, we're gonna make up our pizzas here. I'm only gonna turn this into two, two pieces.
just work in the dough a little bit, get some flour around it so that it's not sticking. Of course, making a mess. That's how we roll. Okay, I'm separating this. We like thin crust. This, if you like thick pizza, you might want to keep it all like a single batch of the recipe that I'm going to leave for you guys. You might want to leave it all together if you like real thick pizza, but we don't. Um, we like it thin and crispy <laughs> with a 500 degree oven. pizza stone we use a non-stick you know pizza pan that has little holes which helps get the crust really crusty I know a lot of people like the pizza stone this is what we have the deflower myself we put some pork holes in the dough so that it doesn't bubble and make a mess all over olive oil on the crust and pizza sauce today I'm just gonna do cheese only or our homemade mozzarella as a topping. All of the kids like cheese. It's such a pretty, I don't know if you guys can tell in the video, but it's such a pretty color from, because obviously the, the raw milk that we get, um, the cows are on grass right now. And when cows are on grass, their milk is so creamy and rich and it, uh, like almost cream colored, you know, yellowish. And it just makes for such pretty uh, butter and cheese. Okay, salt, pepper, messy hands uh, in a 500 degree oven between 10 to 12 minutes until we like it nice and crispy and brown. So yeah, I'll show you when it's done.